because today the topic is dance in happiness. And Baba stamped this topic this morning in the blessing of today's morning. So <clears throat> I was thinking whenever we hear music, something inside us, inside the soul, wants to make the body move. And uh, the 5.30 traffic control we play here is the same as Madhuban. We have different music through the day, but the 5.30 and the 7 o'clock are the same as Madhuban and the 7.30. So whenever the music comes on, if you allow the mind to be still, we get transported to Madhuban. So I like um, I like these these um, traffic controls because they just take me back to Madhuban, and then the soul can not dance but fill up with power. So dancing, the the um, on the flyer there was a ballerina who was on her toes. And uh, I was thinking how much she must have practiced to be able to do that, to be able to hoist her leg so high into the sky. And so to make a dance perfect, we have to practice. And for us Brahmins, we have to practice happiness. Most of us, especially double foreigners, come into Gyan with some degree of baggage, and that baggage can be quite heavy and uh, and very limiting in, in terms of being light and free and able to dance. But over the years, what I've seen now, or what I am seeing now across the world, is that we've done quite a lot of inner work. And there's a sense of maturity in the Brahmin family. And with that maturity, there's a sense of lightness, easiness, and freedom, not complacency that we uh, have reached the destination, but there's collectively a sense of this sense of lightness and maturity. And I think that stage now is enabling us to dance. And dancing for everyone makes you happy. This weekend, uh, last weekend, um, was the first of the UK teachers' retreats in GRC. This weekend is the second one. And last weekend I attended and we had a session on Saturday evening, which was just a family fun night. But uh, we had a bit of a quiz and there were questions on... Um, uh, the sister was playing music or a song, and we had to guess the name of the song. And then we went, that's, those songs then went into dancing. And when we got permission to get up and dance, everybody got up and started to dance. It was quite amazing because we're all in the I main classroom in uh, GRC, and all the chairs are there, but everybody was moving their arms and legs and uh, such joy comes when we dance. And so I don't know if the happiness comes before the dancing or the dancing comes <laughs> before the happiness, but definitely the two things go together. When we are allowed to dance, then it it's 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 really dancing is an expression of joy and and that's remembered in the Ras Lila where Krishna is dancing with all the gopis and gopis 
And uh, so this, this sense of joy uh, is expressed through dance, through movement. But this, when we are looking at it in a spiritual terms, I always remember Daddy Janky because we asked her a question once on how she listened to the Muli. And she said that she doesn't listen to the words per se, but she listens to the music of the Muli. And the Muli is like it makes her dance. And the Muli means flute. So God is using the flute to make us dance. And I don't know if you all feel like this, but when I hear the muli or read the muli, I feel I feel that sense of 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 beauty within the muli that enables the soul to dance in happiness. And so I feel that the family now, including myself, are on this path now to increase our happiness. Baba tells us every day that we're going to the land of happiness and <clears throat> the ticket that we need to get to the land of happiness is to be happy. So I feel that's where we're, we're at now uh, globally, really, we're moving into this happiness and making this happiness more permanent rather than a now and again or yeah now and again kind of experience. But it's 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 increasing this happiness, and I feel this happiness as such a deep connection with the situation in the world that as the world is getting more confused more um, imbalanced, more sorrowful, that, that, that our happiness is actually making things move faster in that direction. Because there's something that joins the end of the cycle to the beginning of the cycle. And I feel it's, it is actually happiness that... When we start our journey as Brahmins, we start off mostly with peace. Peace, we're understanding knowledge. And then after a while, we go into happiness. And happiness, when you mix happiness with peace, it creates love. So I think that that whole combination of peace, love and happiness kind of mixes together very nicely and a uh, very lovely combination. So maybe one can't actually separate which one is which, but I feel that that happiness uh, is, is definitely speeding up the drama. And things are, are in the world, people are saying this, Lockheed people are saying that that everything is getting faster. And there are many Lokic people, many, many Lokic Western gurus that are speaking about seeing beings of light, um, feeling the energy of light spreading out around the world. And, and Baba has predicted this. And he said this in the last few mullahs before he went into silence that um you know they they're picking up the 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 feeling of uh, of light of love coming but they don't know where it's coming from so i feel that this building up a, a stock of happiness is is where we're at and i i feel it's essential obviously it must be we can't survive in the land of happiness if we don't have really that happiness uh, inside us, but um, I think it's um, it's uh, yeah, it's something that is very protective too. And as we really start to face the difficulties, which I think that they are they are on their way, um, 
lots of changes are happening in the world, especially throughout Europe. We just changed our government here, and we all know that it it will never get better. It will only get worse, no matter what they they feel they they want to do and and how they want to do it. It's just too far into corruption now to undo all of that. So there's lots of changes on on government levels around the world, um, and especially in Europe. So, you know, things are going to get worse. The elements of nature are all over the place. Here it's supposed to be summer, and, uh, you know, it's been raining nearly all day long, which is... And then I speak to somebody in, in uh, Scandinavia and they say it's 40 degrees and I speak to somebody else and it's 30 degrees. I mean, it's just all over the place. So all of these things that Baba has already told us over the years, we, we know all these events are going to come. Uh, um, but I feel that happiness is is that stock of internal happiness is really, really essential to strengthen and and like the dancer on the on the on the flyer that was created you know that you to to dance like that to go onto your toes and um, you need to strengthen every muscle in the body and now spiritually we need to strengthen first lesson the first lesson needs to be strengthened that to consider yourself to be a soul and then uh, to constantly remember me, this is the exercise we need to do. But together with that, we need all the virtues and all the powers. And, and these need to be so imbibed that they become natural. So these are our spiritual strengths. These are what support the soul and um, enable the soul to, to move through the scenes in the drama with with ease and you know this, this dancing we for those that met daddy janky and mostly daddy janky in the west we we knew but all the other daddies are as the same you know they they appear to just be like swans moving through water you you never saw them paddling their feet you you only ever saw them moving with grace and stillness and silence and and power spiritual power so um when when but inside each daddy there was a dance going on they were dancing with god and i think this is where we we we're, we're entering this new phase we everyone's been uh waiting for some kind of transformation and just going back to the uk teachers we had um a really powerful retreat last weekend and it was again it was it was very mature it was very not organic but but, but lots of uh lots of dialogue in small groups the theme of the retreat was um, God's revelation through harmonizing sanskaras. I think that that's the title for the year. And anyway, that's the title we took up, something along those lines. And so we we went through a, a really transformative um, exercise from Friday afternoon till Sunday lunchtime. And we started off with blocks. What is it? that's blocking us still and and we would we weren't given questions we were just asked asked to look at personal blocks um, what's blocking us and and what I felt within that dialogue was this sense of um, us taking responsibility that these are my blocks and not blaming anyone else for where I'm at or whatever's happening to to the soul and so then we went to from blocks to looking at um what we um what we need and then uh that that sort of in different ways we did that on saturday and then on sunday we had a, a really nice session which was 
um, what what would it look like when all our sanskaras were in harmony? And um, that was really very interesting to kind of focus on because we we know that transformation is has got to be completed before we go home. But we also, everyone, every one of us is making effort to work on their transformation of self. And so this is not a new thing, but to actually kind of create some kind of vision of, of what, what would it look like if, when, not if, when we've transformed our sanskaras. So we that was incorporated in our dialogue, but we also came up with um, what was the one thing that um, that was 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 uh, was enabling us or making us revert back to using old ways of doing things, and um, what we came up with in our group anyway. I don't remember which way we looked at it, it came back to the same thing, which was lack of self-esteem. That when we are in conflict with others, it was because there was lack of self-esteem. And I I I felt that was also part of the vision that when we do dance together when our sanskaras dance together, it's because we're all in our sense of self-esteem. And it, 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 it's not really rocket science. It's not really anything new, but it's something that, well, for me personally, this um, this was, was something new, the, the way I was kind of looking at it. Because what went with lack of self-esteem was expectations, um, having high expectations of self, high expectations of others, and a few other things were were in that as well. But um, so I thought, well, this is actually quite nice. Baba gave us the muli on Sunday that we um, he was giving us six months, six months to remove I and my and <clears throat> and so there's this feeling to to take that up um as 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 if it was was for now because I I feel we can listen to the Murli and think oh that was ages ago and that was very nice but we're still quite a long way on and it still hasn't happened. So I was thinking that that six months in six months, the end of January, if if there is this focus and attention on removing I and mine, then obviously by the end of six months, something would have gone, some level, something would have shifted, something would have moved. And so um, this is my um, what I took away from, from the retreat, but it's also connected with dancing. Um, and and it's connected with happiness because these things that are my lack of self esteem uh, is stopping me from from permanency of dancing in happiness. So it's not that my self esteem goes up and down like a yo yo, but it's not there in terms of permanency. And so I feel that Baba gives us so many easy ways to do things in the Muli. And um, there's something inbuilt in souls that feel that it's more, it should be done, it should be more difficult, that it, it's, 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 um, then, there must be something else to it. I, I think in our dialogues on um, Saturday, we were looking at different things and, and we kept coming back to consider yourself to be a soul and remember God, remember me. 
And then we kept going into expansion again as if there must be another answer. But I think it's it's the, it's connected with this point that um that hasn't been quite fully grasped yet. Baba says it every day and we were discussing this morning in class about Mama, and Mama left the body in 65. So she heard one year of this five cycle mullies that we read at Sakara mullies. She never heard an Avyakt mully, and yet she became complete um, before Baba. And Mama, I mean, uh, we none of us double foreigners met Mama. But Mama, the stories we hear, spent a lot of time by herself, a lot of time in silence, and a lot of time working on this soul consciousness. So um, this is kind of where I feel I'm at anyway, that I am appreciating the space that is we still have, or the centre has anyway, in terms of going through the COVID period, we we did all the service before that, then we goes into shutdown, complete shutdown. And now out of that, there's this sense of, it's not necessary to run around anymore. It's not necessary to, to keep on um, trying to get people to come. That actually, when we get our stage right, then then that actually attracts others towards us. So I feel that this time is still is still very useful for us to to do that. And one of the things that um, Gentie Ben was taking up when she was um, with us at the weekend was this aspect of um, of silence that. Um, that the daddies all went into silence before they left the body. Daddy Rata Mohini now is most of the time silent. God himself, Bap Dada himself, went into silence um, as he was um, weaning us off the aviact presence. And so this this feels like this time period is now for us to to really appreciate the time. It's, it feels like the lull before the storm, that it's this quiet period before, as we say in English, all hell lets loose, that um, we can still start really building up that inner, inner stage. And happiness, I feel, I feel we've 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 moved away from understanding happiness as having, you know, a fun time of um but happiness really comes from this depth of connection with Baba. I remember Genti Ben talking about Daddy Gulzar and she said when you look at Daddy Gulzar's face it, she 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 hardly ever smiles. She doesn't she doesn't have kind of any expression on her face. But when you sit in her presence, happiness is what you experience. So that soul, Daddy Gulzar, was was really lost in that happiness, completely dancing in that happiness, and that happiness then was experienced by everyone that came in her presence. And her presence was, well, we all know that. We've all had those experiences, not just Bob Dada, but whenever Daddy, Daddy, any of the daddies have um traveled, we 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 know that we're all touched by their presence. So I feel that Happiness is is connected with that. That that's what um, Baba also speaks about. Zealand enthusiasm, and Zealand enthusiasm is the life force of the soul spiritually. When we 
lose our Zealand enthusiasm, then everything is lost, really. So Zealand enthusiasm is like um, oxygen to to the body. Um, it makes everything move. So Zealand enthusiasm for the soul to keep learning, to keep experiencing, to keep um, to keep the thoughts above the mundane and the and the, uh, definitely the negative, but even the mundane and um, the lucky world really to to move. So Zealand enthusiasm and and I feel now we're getting it from well I know from myself I'm getting it from a different source than just from service. Service used to feed me that. Um, and 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 we still do service. I'm not saying we're not doing service, but the service isn't taking up so much of physical energy now that the energy for service we're doing now is from the spiritual level, on the spiritual level. So it's something to keep oneself dancing. So if you like dancing on the physical level, then you need to have music. You need to have music. It's not quite so easy to dance without music. It's not impossible, but it's much easier to dance when there's music. So we need to find ways to keep that music play, playing. And um, and and Baba gives us all the right answers. I mean, good company, Brahmin company, good company being with Baba. This is good company. Really, I listen to the Muli many times throughout the day now. I don't actually sit down and read it many times, but I listen to it on the mobile. And um, and I find that really lovely to to um, to be able to do something, be doing something, and and still hear the Muli and revise the Muli while I'm doing things. So I find the Muli is is also music and um, cooking, doing mundane saver, which needs to be done in every centre. This also helps to keep the music going, um, to have, to create ways of sustaining the Brahmin family and uh, and to to create ways at the moment we are having um, one hour of meditation every evening, and that's been going for now probably over three months, and everyone that's connected with us is is um, which is not a huge number. But it's a consistent number of Brahmins every night sitting 6.30 to 7.30. We do this. This also helps with the music. And we do this. We do this using Bhaktada's drills. This is also quite nice. So different people play one or two drills through that hour of meditation and if you're not um, playing them you don't know when they're going to come on and it's really nice because when Baba says in one second detach yourself from the body you don't know when it's coming it's really interesting to see where your thoughts are and can you do that and is it getting is it increasing your your ability to stop in a second and just go into the stage of bodiless. So all of these things, you, you we create these things that enable us to dance, and we will continue to do this 
for as long as everyone's interested. So as soon as the energy drops down and people start dropping off and there's not the same numbers, then we think of something else to to um, to do collectively together to keep that music flowing. So <clears throat> I feel this is our our job now that we have to create situations or create methods to be able to to do our dancing and and this will increase our happiness so yeah it's nice to dance it's nice to sing um, but it is much nicer to dance and I have a little granddaughter and when she was about, maybe she was about eight, nine months old, she could just um, stand up leaning against something. And I remember she was playing with some toy on the couch in the lounge of her house and some music came on and she started to wiggle and she couldn't speak at that time but she definitely could hear the music and it made her move her little hips and, her, and she was wiggling. And I just thought that, that, you know, the soul just so much responds to music. So, again, when we, when we have the opportunity to dance, and I think it's really quite a healthy thing to do on the physical level also, is to put on some music and dance. I, I know we've all heard the story of when Brahma Baba was, maybe Daddy Jenki told it, that she saw Brahma Baba dancing in the history hall. Um, so, you know, it, it, is, it is something that's inside the soul and, and something we all love to do. So I think it's also really helpful that if there is some kind of moments when the soul is feeling down or there's a little lack of energy to put on some music and uh, and just dance uh, and it just changes the whole energy the energy flow because it is connected with happiness and so it it can um, it can move it around so I think uh, are now, I don't know, that this the weekend is the second uh, UK Teachers re re Retreat, so they may have, actually, instead of that fun night we had last week, they may have a whole hour of dancing because it, it was very apparent how popular it was, so <laughs> they might scrap the idea they did last last week and... and uh, and take up uh, an hour of dancing. And uh, Sister Maureen was dancing. Gentie Byrne had gone back to London, but Sister Maureen was dancing. Sister Mandan was dancing. And um, all the other sisters and brothers were dancing. So it's good. Uh, it's good. So dancing in happiness is, is really recommended. So I know I was asked to speak for a bit longer, but I think I would like to stop there. Maybe if there's any questions, and and maybe we can uh, move into something else. I don't know. I feel my dance is uh, <laughs> the music has come to an end at the moment. <clears throat> Maria, thank you, Linda. Yes, everything it was really very powerful, and uh, uh, you reminded me of many things. Uh, uh, you must have been in Madhuban this uh, time that uh, we had the regional meeting, and uh, I don't know if you remember uh, Sudesh Didi. Uh, in the morning, when we did these exercises before breakfast, 
that she stood on the on the stage and she started dancing and doing all the exercises of dancing and how happy she was and how happy we were looking at her and her happiness and this attracted us so much and we wanted to dance as well and uh, it was amazing i've never seen uh, sudes didi dancing like that it was uh, very interesting and yes um uh also you mentioned the uh, this uh, one hour meditation that you do uh in the evening and uh uh is this uh, on zoom or uh, no, zoom. on zoom on zoom yes because uh, in our country at least uh, in summer no one comes at the center uh so everyone is on zoom so it's a good idea to do that as well. And you said about the drills. Where do you find the drills, Baba's drills? Um, I can send you the link. Yeah, good. I don't know off the top of my head, but I can send you the link. Yeah, okay. Um, let's see if there are, there are any questions. Um, I don't see any. Mm -hmm. Probably they sent them to you personally. I don't know. I haven't. No, I don't. Yeah. I but, don't. No, anyway, I don't see any questions. Please, everyone, if you have any questions, just uh, place them on the chat. Uh, and also about the happiness, you said about uh, Daddy Gulzar. Uh, I mean, uh, well, everybody has seen Daddy Gulzar out of uh, Bab Dada's uh, role. Uh, but um, yes, um, I remember her when she was in Athens once and I was serving her, cooking for her with another sister from London. And uh, it, every time uh, I, I served her, she took uh, her hand and touched some of her food before eating it and she put it in my mouth. And uh, that was for me, gave me so much happiness. Uh, I felt that I was, I was not uh, in this body. I, ha I had the feeling of being uh, subtle. And uh, Bob that I mean, uh, feeding me. And uh, these scenes, all these scenes that we uh, pass through as Brahmins, uh, touch our heart and uh, they give us so much happiness and these memories of this happiness um, make us feel happy whenever we are not happy and all these memories uh, refresh us uh, but yes dancing also in a logic uh, uh, world is really very uh, there is a question here yeah. soul feel and move the body with music because it's all about vibration we respond what is uh, I lost it probably the soul feel and move the body with music because it's all about vibration we respond to that uh, I don't uh, know if you can uh, understand the question No, I have the question. Yeah, uh, Gloria, if you want to make make it more simple, um, you can write it. But yes, dancing is really. Uh, I mean, uh, you have to have a, a balance. You have to have a determination. You have to have power, concentration. Uh, and then you have to be light and uh, with uh, the music um, you take music and uh, it takes you high and you lost contact with uh, the real world I know that because my my daughter is a ballet dancer and she has a lot of uh, practice in that and uh, as you say, it said it very nice and clearly um yes uh, 
it takes a lot of uh, a lot of work for that for doing that. Also, we connected it this morning with truth. He says the power of truth. Those that are in the power that this may you be a great and powerful soul with the power of truth who constantly dances in happiness. Where there is truth, the soul dances. So I was really that was my connection with the Muli, that every day we listen to truth, and. Um, you know, when we came into Gyan, I think every Brahmin thought, yeah, I understand that I'm a soul. I've got that. And, uh, you know, there are some other things. I've got to change a few things in myself. It shouldn't take more than a few years. And then you look back and you think, gosh, you know, I've been doing this over 40 years and I still haven't really quite cracked it. But every time we expose ourselves to the muli, to the truth, it 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 actually does something to to dissolve falsehood, the falsehood, and we keep exposing ourselves to truth. You know, it, it's like it is. It is. It is power. The power of truth is is what's also. Um, making the cycle move in the direction towards the golden age. So these these things that when one dances constantly, they never wilt, become confused, be afraid, or feel weak. I mean, this is the stage, isn't it? This is to create such a stage that that we are completely using knowledge to be able to create that stability. So Baba's mixing, make, make, connecting, dancing in happiness with truth. And, and in, as he says, the boat of truth may rock, but it actually never sinks. So that's, that's a really comforting statement that Baba gives us because we, I'm sure, well, we, we still do have rocky times. There's still, is this is we are in the midst of the time of settlement so there is still things that uh, that rock our boat but we do know if we stay in the boat it actually will not sink so this thing is really nice and it's connected with the power he said this morning it's connected with the power to face the power to face so that's really lovely. And that, again, um, is so reminds us of the daddies, you know, how simple they were. They, they, they just, um, they lived such a simple life, but danced with truth. And so the Moli is our truth every day. And, and it, it, it is doing its work in the soul, even though we may not know what it's doing it's definitely doing something to keep pulling us towards the land of truth so the fortune i think that's another thing i came up with at the weekend is actually appreciation of one's fortune is also um music to keep the soul dancing is to really appreciate just who it is that is speaking to me every day. You know, this 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 is no small thing, is it? And the longer we stay in Gyan, the more clear Baba's truth is. You know, in in the early eighties when I came into Gyan, you know that we were maybe uh, still connected with the uh, US and Russia, a kind of nucle nu nuclear war. But the world has changed so much in that, in that time that it's, it's, it's degraded at such a rapid speed that, um, you know, Baba spoke the Mullis in the 60s. Uh, I came in the 80s and, and now it's like it's just absolutely the prophecy is is panning out now that the truth is actually around us so 
this this I feel I feel this is a really comforting thing because we're not also not kind of connected with converting the whole world into Brahma Kumaris and Brahma Kumars. That it's enough for us to be BKs and and uh, to be really solid and strong and powerful BKs. We don't have to make the whole world into into that. And if they get it, they get it. That's good fortune. And if they don't, that's also their fortune. So I think the whole game since COVID has really shifted and, and uh, you know, what was important isn't so important now. It is down to each individual uh, just making that spiritual consistency, making our spirituality more consistent. And um, and I see this when we have uh, different speakers reading the Mullies around the world. I, I find that that is just so beautiful to see now. We don't have just a Gentu Ben and a Sadesh Didi and a Daddy Janki. Now we've got many teachers that are on that level. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it feels a really, a really such a privilege to be part of the BK clan. <laughs> yeah, such an honor. Yeah, Acha. So, um, I don't see any question. Just uh, Gloria uh, said. I mean, uh, she said that we respond to vibrations. That. That is why we like to dance. It's not a question. She thinks that this is happening. Just we respond to vibrations. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah. Well, everything is a vibration, isn't it? But music is well. I suppose there's different kinds of music. But when you play something that you like, we like um, the Bee Gees, Michael Jackson. <laughs> These are the kinds of things that we play, and uh, this is the kind of thing that gets everybody dancing. So yeah, so maybe this is the this is the what we're the stage we're moving into now is a global Ras Leela that we're all all of us are groups and groupies, and all of us are dancing together in different parts of the world, but all doing the same dance. Beautiful, no? It's a beautiful thought. It's very nice, very nice thought. <laughs> um, we still have some time. Uh, can you say something about uh, our harmonizing the sanskars and uh, why it's so difficult for us sometimes uh, to to dance? together with happiness instead of uh, making effort to feel happy or to be stable in Baba's knowledge when we have some karmic accounts with uh, souls, Brahmin souls, let alone the people outside, we don't care about that, but with Brahmins, how can we, can you give us some tips how to be more uh, detached? Well, I mean, we all churned on detachment. We've all churned on forgiveness. We we we've done all that. I think that's why I felt that it was connected with self esteem. And um, anyway, I was just connecting this weekend and. Uh, we came up with self-esteem, lack of self-esteem. And every, especially Aviat Muli, look at what Baba said to us on Sunday. You're the highest, you're the holiest, you're the sweetest, you're the loveliest. Um, and then he so and then he went into great lengths to explain what each one of those means. And then he said, Do, is this what you feel? Is this what you experience? And and I thought, yeah, that I'm not taking that 
I'm just hearing it. And yeah, maybe one day I'll become that. But I'm not taking that on board as, as a reality. And so maybe if I did take that on board and really, like Mama, you know, Baba told her she would be Lakshmi. She, she believed that 100%. And, and then she made everything inside her become Lakshmi. So I was thinking that, that, that self-esteem, Baba's giving us the tips to, to increase our self-esteem, our self-awareness, self, self, no, self-esteem. That, you know, if I really think that I am the holiest, the highest, the loveliest, the sweetest, the whatever titles he gives us, if I stayed in that consciousness, then maybe that will help to make that more consistent. And 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 I felt that in, in conflict, well, this is what I realized as well, um, that when there's conflict, it's always to do with misunderstanding, usually a lack of clear communication. And then because, because the communication isn't clear, then one party or the other takes it in the wrong way. And then if we have this sanskar of feeling not worthy, which is lack of self-esteem, then we go into, into waste. And then, and then if we go into too much waste, we go into um, retribution. So if I can increase my self-esteem and whenever, you know, drama says something, someone says something or does something that's not to my liking, then I can just brush it off if I'm in my self-esteem. I've seen people really get so mad with Daddy Janky and she just goes into silence, waits for them to finish gives them lots of love and carries on. You know, it's like you're not going off and sulking or, you know, getting upset, distressed. Just let them say what they need to say. Just, But it's not disempowering me. So anyway, that's what I, I my present current thoughts are to, to try this, how to get to this... Uh, stage where where there's consistency and i find this fascinating journey because if if you could learn it straight off then what you know what we're going to do with the rest of the time till the cycle ends so this is this is lovely to learn and keep looking at oneself and looking at the situation in a more detached way unemotional way and um see if we can pull out what really is going on underneath it so that was really the the um the outcome of many uh different short group discussions with different people because i i i anyway the groups that i was talking to and these are teachers that have been in gyan a long time that um you know everybody wants to make this next shift because we all know it's there we can feel it but to actually get in it and stay in it, um, well, I think maybe we'll all jump at the same time and uh, I don't know. But anyway, it's, it's quite exciting to to look at that because there isn't anybody else in the world that's that's looking at themselves in this on this level. <laughs>